like, like you see, look at all the plants. There's so much stuff out. Not that different from what was out last time we were out here. Hey, what's up garden friends? Jeff here, how's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well, I'm great. Spring, today, first day of spring, not for y'all. It's a few days later, but that's, that's why I'm so happy. It's about to start raining. I am actually in the middle of a, of a project. The pool's full of water and it's probably gonna overflow given the forecast for the next few days. You know, the pumps and things, they aren't up and running yet. So uh, I need to get a hose put over the top of this, this fitting right here that goes onto the waterfall pump that I will then throw into the pool to pump the water out since the filters and things aren't set up yet. So that's why I'm here is to get a hose, but there's also all this stuff going on. So I figured I'd bring you all along. Then I don't, I don't know if I'll get plants, I want to, but that's not the task right now, but it's still, it might happen. We'll see what happens. Go home, pop off that pool cover, get a pump thrown in there, get things feeling right outside again, and then maybe move some plants out in a few days. I don't really know, just kind of going with the flow here. No specific plan, just gonna be doing things. Hopefully it's entertaining. Trying to stay mindful of the fact that it's supposed to start raining here pretty soon and keep doing that for a few days. So I probably shouldn't be wandering around too much. Need to stay on task here. Just very distracted, very distracted by all the plants. I'm seeing some trees. Look at the trees, just arbs. Nothing crazy, just what you normally see. Some azaleas, nice looking azaleas and some beautiful rhododendrons. Look at those, they're nice and full. Good shape to them. Oh, and then shrubbery. Just not that time of year yet. They're not gonna be seeing too much. It's very exciting yet. Got some weeping cherries. I think these are all weeping cherries and Sun Valley red maples. And then what are these, lilac trees? Miss Kim, patio lilac trees. Probably be pretty. There's some kind of birch down here. Whispering clump birch. I don't know much about that one. Some greens. I don't think I can do that yet. Uh-oh, uh-oh, lens cap, take it off. There we go. Okay, yeah, so most of the plants are on racks. Not gonna be able to show much. Beautiful Dolce Silver gumdrops. Nice spring plant. That's well thought out. Hooker is, they're tough. Mine stay evergreen most of the year. So, great option for the springtime. Hellebores, looking nice. To me, hellebores are more of a winter thing, so I'm over them already, but they are beautiful. Look at that. That is beautiful, isn't it? Some of my other favorites, the Louisias. I don't have the sun for these anymore. He used to grow tons of them. But uh, those days are long gone. We're enjoying the view of everything through the plastic. That's the best I can do. Look at that, it's beautiful. Pansies and crests, some phlox, all kinds of good spring stuff. I see some orange dianthus up there that I think looks pretty cool. It says Super Trooper Orange. Is that what it says? I'm gonna scroll over, look through the lens. Super Trooper. Orange dianthus. Yeah, it's far away, but you get the point. Looks nice. Primulas. I've been waiting for these to come out. These are in great big assortment containers. I'm looking for some singles. Haven't seen them at the nurseries yet. Hopefully sometime soon. Everything else is just trees and shrubs. They aren't looking quite their best yet. Things have been fairly chilly here, but a week or two, these will all be looking really nice probably. Okay, got what I needed. I think. I didn't film anything inside. The music was really loud and they were unloading trucks. It was just a zoo in there of getting things unloaded and labeled. I'm thinking I might swing by Home Depot. Don't need to. I have everything that I need, but like, why not? It's right there. The real question here is going to be, are the gates to the garden department even open? Because the last couple times I've checked, like last weekend, just a few days ago, I was out here and I'm just went by and the gates were still closed. I don't know if that's an employee shortage thing or maybe they were just figuring we had a cold spell that moved through so it's like may just wait push through it wait for things to get better which I can understand makes sense to me. I see plants set up if those gates aren't open I'm not bothering. Nope okay so they have plants but you still can't actually go through the entrance here. Yeah I'm not I'm not going. I'm not walking in circles around from the front entrance through the side, dragging dirt and plants through the store. I prefer to support the local nurseries anyways. If there's time this week, I doubt there will be, but if there is time during the week, then I can pop out to a local 
place and see if they have primolas or anything that I can use for spring containers. I'm gonna go this way, I'm changing my mind. I'm not opposed to shopping at Home Depot, Wolves, or Walmart, but it's if I'm gonna go out of my way, then that's what I'll do. I was right here, so if they had been open, would've been great, but no luck. Oh well. Oh, <laughs> we'll definitely be going back because I completely forgot to get the chlorine tabs, which is one of the main reasons that I went there was for the tubing and the chlorine. It's a saltwater pool, but if the system's not running, the salt generator thing isn't doing anything. So you have to use chlorine tabs this time of year, and I just completely forgot. I have enough to sanitize it, like to get it up and going, but I will need more, so probably will be coming back out here at some point. Hey, Turbs. How you doing, baby? You got, you got some snot on your face. You haven't been around for a while. He's been, you know, doing the doggy school thing. I'm sure you can hear it, so here's a little before. Here's what it looks like. And after, look at, isn't it nice to have the pool open, get all the nasty stuff off the cover and some life back into the backyard. I know that it's probably very, very loud. I'm trying to keep my hand cupped over my microphone to see if that helps isolate out some of that sound. Probably won't make a huge difference, but I don't really have anything left to do out here for right now. You can go inside. I have some new predator bugs that need to be released and maybe move some plants outside tomorrow. I'm not sure. I think it's probably nice enough to bring the mule palms out more than likely. Oh, and I know that these aren't symmetrical. I just did them two different ways to see which one I liked better. I think this is what I like over here. That looks a lot better. So I'll go ahead and flop these around so that it's Look at more, you know, what's symmetrical. You get it. Supposed to wait till this evening to release the bugs. I'm gonna wait a little bit longer, and get in there and get the new bugs released. And there should be some new plants coming in the mail here eventually. Hopefully sooner than later. I'm not sure. Turbo's been having a great time. I don't know why he's in there. That water's pretty freaking cold, but he does not seem to mind. He <laughs> put All right. See you later. Of course, as soon as I put the camera on her. Gonna run away, just as always. There's Colby. Colby, you gonna say hi? Colby's having a snack. A nice treat, usually always munching down on the lettuce. Give him something special. It's so nice looking outside. Seeing the water. You can even hear, I don't think y'all can hear it, but you can kind of hear it a little bit through the windows, the sound of the moving water. Bringing me some life. Now just need to get these peach trees blooming. Get the annuals going. It's gonna be a great year outside in the garden and look at that magnolia i got the if you didn't i had shades over these windows because during the winter the light comes through here just blinding it's so incredibly bright i don't really like having them up they're shears not shades i don't really know what the difference is but someone may have an issue with the fact that i screwed it up and it adds some privacy because when there aren't any leaves on the trees it's just like looking right into all these houses not a fan of that. Good to be able to see the magnolia. Survived its first winter, little gem. We had some rough weather. I know, abrupt change. We got some more predator mites here. Just the Californicus, same type I have been releasing all winter long. 5,000 of them uh, just hopefully doing the thing for the spider mites. I ordered from a different vendor this time. It's Arbico Organics, which has pretty good reviews. I'm pretty sure I've ordered from them before. Everything on their site seemed very familiar. Probably been a minute, but maybe it was some type of soil amendment or something that I used to get from them. I honestly can't remember. Not that exciting, just more predator mites. I also have some nematodes hanging out in the fridge that might help with earwigs. I don't know for sure. There's like really really mixed information on whether or not they will do anything, but they might. I was watering over here the other day, and the way I water is I, well, I water the plants, and I let those trays fill up and let the plants have a good soak, usually anywhere from a few hours to sometimes a full day, depending on if I feel like throwing the circulation pumps in there, because water has to be moving if the water is going to stay in there for more than a couple of hours. But I noticed that the surface of the water was wiggling and I went in and had a look and it was just earwigs. It was just covered in earwigs and earwigs aren't always a bad thing. It just depends on one, the type and what you're growing. It's not uncommon for them to chew holes in the leaves of the plants. The soil dwelling earwigs that are over there are mostly eating away at detritus and uh, decaying organic 
matter, but still they're really big and those things bite and it hurts. I haven't noticed any holes or anything in my leaves. I've always had some earwigs out here. I see them all the time and it's never been a problem, not the great big kind that hang out in the soil anyways. But because of the bitey thing, they're up there with, if you don't know, me and centipedes, not good. I don't mind bugs, but centipedes, that's a bug where you, I will jump in a chair and scream. I do not like being around those things because they get you and it freaking hurts. That startles me more than anything, but I like to stay the hell away from them. Earwigs, they're up there. Those are both two types of insect that I really just don't want around. Some of them are fine, but not too many. So I'm going to get those released. I'm not gonna go through it in the video. I've done it so many times. Need to repot this Alochesia jeculin also. Done a good amount of growing, but I think that it would do a whole lot more growing if it were in a larger container. I think by now, this should have really filled this out. It's been, what, a couple months? Yeah, that entire root mass is moving up and down in there, so need to get that bumped up into something else and we get a close up on something special going on over here. The only reason I mentioned, okay, all right, this tripod's such a piece of crap. The only reason I mentioned the uh, predator mites is because I switched who I got them from, so I wanna make sure I had some sort of record as to when I changed around, if I noticed any sort of difference, that sort of thing. Where did my where did my potting soil go? Gonna be a big upgrade. Okay, this is ridiculous. Let's get a better angle here. There we go, slightly better. This is the same mix that I used in a video that came out right before this where I was repotting my holiday cactus. I don't see a reason to mix up something new. This has good drainage. It should hold on to a good amount of moisture. There's Plenty of organic material in there, which the alocasia should enjoy. What is that? Oh, it's an old flower from one of the schlumbergeras that can stay in there. Let's see how these roots are looking. I mean, that was just a tiny little plug not long ago. That's pretty good. Actually perfect in the sense that I don't have the urge to loosen that root mass up. I think that that is right where it needs to be to get moved up. Alocasias, they tend to throw an absolute fit if you mess with their roots very much. Where that was rooted out, that looked like it was right where it should be to just pop it up to something larger and add some more soil around it without having to get in there and mess with the roots. That should be good. That's not going to need another repot before it's time to throw it in the ground outside. It is possible that this mix might actually drain too well for this plant. I've noticed that the Jacqueline likes things nice and moist. It hasn't been one that throws a fit though when it dries out, which is surprising for an alocasia this size. It's usually when they're this small, if you let them dry out, they'll just start to wither and die. But this one hasn't been doing that. A little bit more mix on top. Now you might remember there were originally two of these. So one of them was like that. It dried out just a smidge. Not very much at all, not long after I transplanted these at, from the plugs into those two inch, I think those are two inch square pots that those were in. Yeah, it died. It was not having it. It was just dried out for like one day. That was it, but that's all it took. But I've had much better luck with this one so far. What a pretty plant too. I, I know it's not much to look at, but you know, it just came from this tiny pot over here. That's going to look much better and not too long at all. Ideally, that'll be nice and rooted out by I would say mid-May to June. It's not an alocasia that I will risk planting outside before the ground temperatures are, uh, I wanna say probably, I want them to be above 60, just to avoid setbacks. So it's probably going to be in this container for at least a couple more months before I put it in the ground or into another container. Not hardy here, so if it goes in the ground, I will have to lift it and bring it inside. I think that probably get better growth out of it if I put it in the ground, wouldn't you think? It's when I see the jacqueline's, all the pictures of them, they uh, are one that looks like they just offshoot like crazy and want to run around, which I think is going to be more likely to happen in the ground. I can have a nice layer of compost and have it on drip and it's just not going to be as many imbalances and as much fluctuations between moist and dry that would have in a container. So that's probably what I will do. Nope, well, got the predator mites wet. I was going to pot up this ficus too, but I changed my mind. It's adjusted fairly well to being out here and I don't want to mess with it. So I'm pretty sure I mentioned when I got this that I'm going to be waiting 
until summertime when I have this outside to do any bonsai stuff with it. Isn't it just freaking adorable though? I know I mentioned that there were tropical plants coming in the mail this week, was just a few minutes ago, which is, I mean, a few hours ago for me, but not long ago for y'all. I checked the tracking on them and they're not gonna be here until the morning this video needs to come out. So we just have to wait to get to look at what those plants are until next week, more than likely. But I ran by Greenscape, which is a nursery that I've gone to in a lot of vlogs last weekend. It was actually Saturday morning, right when I released this video. No, the video that came out last Saturday. I'm sorry, hold on. I need to reset my brain. Last Saturday's video came out early because I was sitting in the parking lot at Greenscape getting ready to go in. And I've warned that if I go in there, I'm not going to remember to release the video. Like My mind just resets and goes into plant mode. So that's why that video came out like 10 minutes early. And while I was in there, I did pick up a couple plants and too much time talking about them. Go ahead and get this put back. What? Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? I really am liking the Jacqueline. I'm not all that into hairy plants. Plants with lots and lots of trichome action on them. But this one is an absolute stunner. I know that was a weird angle, but I thought it looked cool with the light shining through it. So I'm going to, I'll just put this, I'll set this. It'll go over where, uh oh. Made it fit. Barely, barely got it in there. I have a couple other alocasias that really could use a repop, but I don't know if I have space in here. Things are getting kind of tight on the growth shelves. And like I mentioned, there are going to be more plants rolling in. I might have to do some major rearranging out here next week. I have this. Uh, this is not a longelo. What is this? I want to say longeloba, but it's not a longe. There's a longeloba right there. You see it? Kind of. It's got that Cattleya leaf over the top, and there's the other longeloba. Who are you? Looks an awful lot like a lime zinger xanthosoma, but I don't remember potting two of those up, and I have one in there already that's much bigger than this one. But this is what that looks like. Just maybe the leaves are a little bit longer. I don't remember this plant. What what did I do here? Okay, I don't really have space to repot it, but I can top it off, get some more soil in there for it. I think it's just another lime zinger xanthosoma. You see the other one back there? Thinking that's probably what that one is. Look at the growth that's coming out of these fun little philodendrons down here. These are the pink Birkins. Not showing any variegation yet, but that's pretty normal for their size. They're putting on a good amount of growth and so are the Peperomios, the variegated ones. Look at all the pink that's mixed in there. Those have probably tripled in size. The Anthurium, Clariviana, Clariviatlila. Looking good, seems to appreciate that new mix that I put it in, held still for a bit, but it's coming back. What was I doing over here? Oh yeah, new plants. You want to see the new plants? Can you see them from right here? Comment down below. Maybe you're able to spot them amongst all the chaos. I should actually probably pull these out and take them to the desk. Get more of an up close and personal look at them instead of trying to appreciate them when they're surrounded by all these other lovely plants. Look at it. Isn't that just a stunning plant? Variegated vanilla. The vanilla orchid. No, <laughs> this is a good tie back to what was just going on over there on the shelves. When I had placed an order back in the fall, I got in lots and lots of little plugs and I was pretty satisfied with all those plugs except for the two variegated vanillas. They were tiny, pathetic, like it was, it was nothing. And they were like 20 bucks a piece. It was a total rip. I was not happy with that purchase. The variegated vanillas, they're not that hard to come by. The last few years, I have mostly only been seeing them as the ones with the yellow variegation though, and I'm not a fan of yellow variegation. If there is yellow variegation in a plant, it needs to be mixed in with other creams and lighter greens. It needs to have more of like a multicolor thing going on. I'd had trouble finding one that was the nice white variegation. So that's, that's what they had. Had them right there at the nursery, which I was surprised to see. So I picked one up and this is a nice size plant too. It costs a little bit more than those plugs did, but not by much. And those plugs were this, like this big. Yeah, I had two of them, but what does that matter when this thing's probably, I would say maybe two and a half feet long. And it has another growth coming up on the inside and another one down below and the bottom down there. The vanilla bean orchids, not one of the easiest orchids to grow. As far as house plants are concerned, you need a very bright location, not direct light. Generally, that can vary depending on where you live, but generally very bright, indirect light and lots of heat and humidity. But I like the Phalaenopsis types orchids where they will fare just fine in normal household temperatures. 
these can, you can do that, but you have to be much more cautious about how you water them. And the growth will be much slower. It's going to be much more difficult to get them to flower. The flowers aren't really anything to get terribly excited about, at least not until they're much larger plants. But you get the vanilla beans out of them. You have your nice, fresh vanilla. It'll be a few years, probably, until I see anything like that. But that's okay. It's worth the wait. I probably wouldn't, just speaking for myself, I wouldn't bother trying to grow these in my house because my house is rather cool and it just wouldn't go well. If I didn't have this warm space out here, I don't know that I'd be giving the vanilla orchids a try. But again, it's a community comment down below. If you've had luck with them, just growing them in a more moderate ways, then let everybody know. What's your trick? I'm excited about this one. I had a variegated vanilla from like 2004 to around 2010, somewhere in there. I had it for at least six years and it got to be pretty good size. These will do a good amount of growing for you. Don't think it ever flowered, not that I can remember. And that one got lost during some construction and moving stuff. It got, some people moved all the plants that were in one area of my patio to a full sun spot while they were tearing up my patio to lay down a new one. That was while I was away and came home and my orchid collection had just, phew, it was completely fried. It was like a hundred degree day in the summer and the vanilla was, it was one of the goners. Well, they were all the goners. That was the first time I lost my orchid collection. So I'm happy to have a new one. Nice big one. It's probably going to be getting a repot sometime around June. Similar situation to the ficus down here. I want to wait to repot that until I can have it outside under just better conditions. I like the grow space. I think it's been great for the plants, but, but for the really, really tropical plants that are heat lovers, not that the ficus is necessarily that, but sensitive plants or plants that really like a lot of heat and humidity, I prefer to get them repotted outside and just have better success. It can wait another couple of months, more than likely, until it needs to be bumped up into something larger and put onto an actual trellis that has some more cross support in there, not just tied to some sticks. You can you see why I like it though? Look at that, those big succulent looking leaves. They're really shiny with that white outline on them. Stems are glossy and plump. Just a fun looking plant. The bigger it gets, the more full it will appear. It will grab on to most supports. They're not that picky about what they'll grow on, which is also nice. I'm not gonna have to put it onto a moss pole that stays wet at all times. You can even see it, it's little tendrils here. Well, maybe you can see it. If I zoom in, you can see it. That's wrapped around this plastic stake. That's holding on pretty well. So in that regard, in some ways, the vanilla orchids being fast growers and pretty easy to get onto a support, a pretty resilient orchid. As far as being a house plant is concerned, meh, maybe. I think for the right home, if you have nice bright conditions, probably going to do well for you. Okay, here's the next one. It's, I'm pretty excited about this one. Can you look, look, at, look at that leaf. Look at it, it's so shiny. That's not even one of the nicer leaves on here. Decent amount of fenestration going on with this one. Look at that leaf. It's a little bit muddy looking. I'm picky about the variegation like I've talked about. I usually like when things are more patched out and they don't look so muddy, but this is a good sign for the various colors that will come out on this plant as it grows since it's still rather small and there's already some fenestration going on within the foliage. If you can see over here, that's encouraging because this is not a plant that you would normally see the fenestrations on when they're this small. This is on a 12 inch support. Clearly needs to be moved up to a bigger one though. Right, look, it's got all this stuff going on up above the support. I should probably talk about what this is. Take a guess based off of the fenestrations in the variegation. Epiprenum pinnatum variegata. One of the variegated Epiprenum pinnatums. Typically with variegated plants, I like to pick ones out that have a really heavy amount of variegation on them. They had several of these at the store. I was really pleased to see these at a nursery because it's one of those ones where I've thought about ordering them online, but I wanted to see it in person and I figured that it's one that would probably be available fairly soon, just figured it'd be a few more years. That was a nice welcome surprise. Even though there were some there that had more intense variegation on them, I wasn't all that hung up on the variegation because I assumed that all the ones at the nursery that were together probably all came from the same mother plant. So in the long run, their variegation will probably be pretty similar. This one had a shocking amount of fenestration on it for its size. It's only a foot tall and the leaves are already cut. My pinnatums, whenever I've grown them, usually have to wait longer than that. These generally like need to go about three feet, at least up a support before I start to see 
drastic fenestration. This is nothing like when they're mature, but it's enough to set them apart from just looking like a regular old pothos. Or epiprenum, sorry. Technically a pothos, but you know what I'm saying. Not one of the arias. Definitely some differences there. Lovely plant that is going to also follow the same care trajectory as I mentioned with the vanilla orchid. Going to hold off on doing anything with that again until it's nice and warm and it's outside. I might stick another support in here just because why not? It's one of these coconut ones where there's a hole already in the top. So you can normally just pop another one right in there. And I have one, but it's four feet long. So that would be overkill. I probably just get online and order another one of these that's a one foot support and put it on there just so that this stuff up here has something to grab onto. Nice looking plant. Uh, the potty mix that it's in is holding on to quite a bit of moisture, more than I'm comfortable with for an epiprenum. I'm sure when it was being grown in a greenhouse and it was really warm, I guess it's pretty warm in here too. But you know, there's generally much better lighting in a greenhouse. Plants are being fed more and in, in more of an active growth. I wouldn't be as concerned about that potty mix in here. I don't really know. It's been a few days since I watered and this is still fairly, oh, it's not as moist as I thought. It's just a really dark blend. I was thinking that that was still sopping wet. It's not, I, it'll probably be okay. The epiprenums are ones where if I ever have issues with them, it's always with rot. So I like to have them in a mix that drains really well. Cause I'd rather have to water it more frequently than accidentally overwater at one time and then deal with handling issues with rot on them. Nice, vigorous looking plant. The price was good on both of these. And that's a matter of opinion, but considering that for a long time, the epiprenum panado that's variegated, those were, multiple hundreds of dollars when you try and buy cuttings of them online. And this was not multiple hundreds of dollars, wasn't even a single hundreds of dollars. I don't see the sticker on there. I was gonna tell you how much it was. I think it was 60 bucks, which for a plant this size, pretty dang good. I'm excited about them. It's fun seeing all these plants rolling to the nurseries. I did end up popping by Home Depot. Didn't film any of it because I just ran in and out very quickly to grab the chlorine tablets that I had forgotten to get for the pool. And, uh, that was the typical houseplant selection. There was one thing that jumped out at me though, and they had 10 inch containers, which is like your typical standard, like floor plant size houseplant. They had those with Edinsonii's in them on three foot trellises. And I thought that was pretty neat for 29 bucks, $30 and get these really big, nicely established Edinsonii's. I should have taken some video of it. I'm sorry. I'm sure it'll be around on the internet because that's kind of a big deal. It's not something you would typically see at a big box store. That's exciting. If that's something people haven't gotten yet, you can get them larger already up onto some trellises for 30 bucks. I also was pleased to see that at the nursery where I grabbed these from, they also had lots, not just a few. They had lots of little baby ties, the Thai Constellation Monsteras. They're a hundred bucks. They were in, I believe it was four, six inch pots and it was just a few leaves, but that's definitely progress. It's more than Costa Farms has been able to do, right? Obviously I didn't get one of those because I already have one gigantic one over there that I have to figure out how to make fit in this grow space every single year. If I were to ever see a one that was larger where I could see the variegation on it first for a reasonable price, I might grab one because I do love mine really just as a Monstera Deliciosa, not necessarily for its variegations. Mine doesn't have a ton of variegation. It has very light speckled variegation, which I like, but it would be cool to have one of those ones that's just like splattered and white. I, I would probably enjoy that also, but I'm not going to frivolously grab a hundred dollar little plant that I know is going to get gigantic if I don't know that I'm even going to end up wanting it, especially when there's so many people who don't have them and would probably like to get one. I think having two would be a little greedy. I'll be singing a different tune. I'm sure if I start seeing these things for like 50 bucks is nice large plants, but that's that's not probably happening anytime soon. Tips, tricks, suggestions on either one of these, always appreciated. The Pinatum, it's not that far off from your standard houseplant stuff. The higher the humidity, the better for its climbing and for nice looking foliage and better leaf opening on the plant, bright filtered indirect light throughout most of the day, a well-drained organic potting mix. I generally fertilize them with a half strength fertilizer, just an all purpose, nothing fancy. And that's always been fine. At least with my Cebu blues and the other panatums that I've grown, I haven't found them to be a difficult one to grow, but they can be one that takes up a lot of space like the tie back there. Cause anything that wants to climb to me, I view those as something that I need to be sure I have a 
spot to put it in. I'm prepared to weigh down the containers so that I can have a nice big support in there for them. I don't have a ton of those plants. I don't always like the climbers. I think they have some of the neatest, I think they have some of the neatest looking foliage on them, but I just, I don't want lots of sticks and poles around in my garden during the summertime. It's hard to make that not look odd and out of place. If, does that make sense? So few and far between, and I like this one. It's already looking nice at a very small size. That was fun. Always nice looking at the plants. There's a shot from up above. The light's a little bit less jarring from up here and get a nicer look at those leaves. Look at that fenestration. That's so nice on a plant that's not that big. A better shot of the variegated vanilla, maybe. Just different lighting, not quite as harsh up here. And the shot I've been waiting to go in for, look at that. Isn't it just beautiful? Wasn't quite sure how the flowering was going to go from having been in a truck and then in a greenhouse and then going through the cold to get it here and then having it in here under artificial lighting, which tends to produce a more pale flower. That's looking pretty dang good, I would say. And the bud that it's opening up back there, that thing's huge. I can't reach it or I would show you for comparison purposes, but that one, that's a really big, thick flower bud back there. Inflorescence, I should say, and that's just the start. Love the bird of paradise. This one, I would hope, will still be doing its thing when it's time to move these outside. They generally hold onto their flowers for a pretty long time, and it has, what, one, two, three, four, at least five spikes in it. I might be able to get it to throw up a couple more. I don't know. Time will tell. It's really all going to depend on lighting and temperature fluctuations out here, but it's just making me so happy when I come out here. I love seeing that. One of my favorite flowers. So happy with getting that plant. I almost didn't get it. I'm glad that I did. I've been thinking that I might need to lower this grow light down a couple feet to intensify things, but I don't know. It doesn't really look like there's much stretching going on here. It's been out here for about three weeks. There is some paleness in there, which could mean that it might need some more light. I don't know, I'm gonna keep an eye on it and it won't be hard. That's on a hook. So all I have to do is throw a little chain on the hook and put the other end to the bottom of the light fixture and it'll come right down. So it'd be like a two minute project. I just don't want to overdo it. I know that the uh, Pakistaki's Ludia would appreciate the light being closer. because you can see that's stretched out some, but I don't really care because I cut that back when I take it outside anyways. Just wanna make sure I'm maintaining that nice glaucous sheen on the plant and nice stiff cupped foliage. That's the way I like to see the bird of paradise. Well, this has been fun. Sorry the new plants didn't come in the mail since I talked about it and teased it a little bit, but they'll be here next week. There's gonna be lots of new plants. That's, that's that time of year. So this is, I think this is good enough because these are both very exciting plants. The ones that are coming, I'm pretty excited about, but they're also mail order. So I don't want to overhype it. Who knows what they're even going to look like when they come in. Should be looking just fine when they come in, but you just never know. Really? I barely touched you. I barely touched you and you're flopping over? What a baby. That means I need to increase airflow over here. It shouldn't just be like from a little touch. It shouldn't be that weak. Come on, get with it. I have a fan that blows over in this direction. So all I have to do is adjust the settings on that one. Probably ramp it up to run a little bit longer during the day. And that should help with, with that. So dramatic, come on. Oh, and the, uh, I keep wanting to say pistachio, pista that's not what that is. McDowell got that repotted last week and it's already appreciating that repot. Look at that, got a new leaf starting to pop out from the center there and it's holding its other foliage up nice and stiff like I like to see. That was a good move. Plant seems happy, seems to be liking its soil blend. And you have a new leaf opening up over here on the VGI. Finally, it's opened up a couple, but they've been duds. Like they've come out tiny little scrawny things. I think that one up there is going to be looking a lot better. Could mature more appropriately. That's going to do it. Hope everybody's doing well, having a great day, great life, everything's just going fantastic for you. Comment down below, say hi. I love talking to everybody. Spring moved in for you. It's feeling great here, it's just raining. So can't go out and do much, but the ball is in motion. And I have been making an, an effort to clean up outside before we start doing projects out there this year. Last year, that was a big part of the channel was getting things cleaned up and looking nice. For the most part, I'm trying to do that all off camera so that we can just dive right into it and start doing planters. There'll be some cleaning to do. It's spring. There's still winter recovery to take care of outside. I, did, I was gonna move the mule palms outside, but I don't think I'm going to. 
they're back there. You can't really see them. I think I should just give it another week or two. I want to wait till temperatures are more stable. They can take a good amount of cold, but the one had crown rot on it and it's just starting to push up new foliage from that crown rot. And I just, I don't want to kick it while it's down basically. So I'm just going to give it a couple more weeks. All right, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.